this morning I want to I want to conclude our series on elevating relationships uh, we began the first Sunday uh, by talking about elevating relationships through communication uh, then we talked about elevating relationships in the midst of storms. I want to close this morning with elevating relationships with genuine love. Elevating relationships with genuine love. Uh, Reverend Denise read for us that wonderful uh, chapter on love in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans, the 12th chapter and the 9th verse. I want to read the A part of that 9th verse of 12th chapter of Romans. It simply says, love must be sincere. Love must be sincere. Grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand for ever. That, that 12th chapter of Romans is a chapter of action. Uh, you remember it starts in that first verse of the 12th chapter where the writer says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service the theme throughout the 12th chapter of Romans is that whatever you do you got to have some action to it it's not just enough to say you're a Christian but you got to act like it you got to present your body as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. But as the writer goes down to that ninth chapter, uh, he begins to talk about love. But he uses that same theme that if your love is going to be real, if your love is going to be true, you've got to put some action to it. It's not just enough to say you love somebody. It's not just enough for the words to come out of your mouth, uh, but, but you've got to show some action. He, he, he says, literally, your love must be sincere. That word sincere means free from pretense or deceit, proceeding from genuine feelings. Because your feelings are genuine on the inside, they ought to show on the outside. Because your feelings are true on the inside, you ought to be able to show those same feelings in your action. Well, why is this important? It's important because love is important to the faith. If you read the Bible, there is a continuous theme throughout of love and if we're ever going to be the men and women that God has called us to be we ought to be able to get love right that's why uh, you remember in his letter uh, what Reverend Steiner read already in his letter to the church at Corinth Paul spent an entire chapter dealing with love but Paul said listen uh, it really does not matter how gifted you are it does not matter that you speak in tongues. It does not matter that you prophesy. None of that matters if you cannot love. I wish I had a Bible reader here. He, he said, listen, all that goes by the wayside if you cannot do one thing, and that's love. And the sad thing is even in the body of Christ, so often we get love wrong. I told the 8 o'clock crowd it was Mary J. Blige who said she was looking for real love. But because love is something that is hot, I mean real, I, I, you know, anybody can say they love you. But it's hard to find real, genuine love. And so this morning I, I just want to talk 
about four things. And if we're going to elevate our relationships with genuine love, four things I believe genuine love is. Number one, genuine love is unconditional. Everybody say unconditional. unconditional. First Peter, the fourth chapter in the eighth verse says, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. The sad thing is, is much of love that is found today is conditional. I love you as long as you meet these conditions. As long as he says, I, I conditional love is I love you as long as you keep making me feel good. I will love you as long as you maintain your attractive looks. I will love you if if you are successful and popular, I love you if you do what I say. I will love you if you believe what I believe. I will love you even if you keep supporting my bad habits. I will love you if I can control you. I will love you if you approve of my decisions. I, I, I will love you if you behave properly. I will love you only if you love me. That's conditional love. True, unconditional love has no condition to it. It has no walls to it. And if we are going to elevate relationships through genuine love, we've got to love unconditionally. That means we've got to love even when it's hard. Even when your child comes to you with something you don't like, so you got to love them anyhow. Even when somebody in your family does something you don't, that doesn't mean you have to like it. That doesn't mean you approve of it. But your heart says, I'm going to love you unconditionally. Ephesians 5 and 25 says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Think about that. That's what Christ did for us in spite of us. I, I love what 1 Peter says. It says, Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude. You, you see, you, 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 you ought to. That moment that you start to love them conditionally, instead of seeing them, see the Jesus in them. I wish I had a witness here. And, and when you start seeing the Jesus in people, uh, instead of that circumstance, instead of that situation, uh, it becomes easier to love them. I, I, I told you a story. I heard my pastor uh, tell years ago, he had a brother who was on, who was on drugs. Uh, and the final, and they had helped him, and he had turned their back on him. He had stolen from him, done all kind of things over the years, and they, they loved him. And finally, he said the last straw was uh, he broke into his house, stole his TV, VCR, all kind of other stuff. And so my pastor and his, bro his other brother decided, okay, he, he, it's too much now. We, we, we're tired of him. We're going to go get him. He said he grabbed a golf club and his other brother grabbed, uh, grabbed a baseball bat. Said, and even though he was that brother, he said when they saw him, because he had broken into their house, he had stolen that stuff. They had tried to help him, and, and here he did this. And said they got in the car, and they drove around looking for him, and they looking for him. And he said his brother Johnny saw him first. He, he said, there he goes. Said, but when he looked over and saw him, he said his brother had on his daddy's old coat. He said he had on his daddy's old hat. And, and, and he was walking just like his daddy. And, and he said that, that they, they wanted to get him because he had broken into their house. He said, but by the closer they got to him, they no longer saw that brother, but they saw that daddy in him. I wish I had a witness here. And they pulled the car over and, and 
and they wrapped their arms around him and they said, listen, because they didn't see him, they saw that father in him and they knew. I wish I had somebody here who knows you've got to love unconditionally. And listen, it's not easy. It's hard sometimes to love the unlovable. It's hard sometimes to make to love people who don't even want to be loved. But, 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 but whenever it gets hard and you, you have a hard time loving folk, uh, just think about how Christ loved you. That while you were yet sinners, Christ died. G genuine love is unconditional. But the second thing, genuine love is not only unconditional, but genuine love is trusting. Mm -hmm. Genuine love is trusting. 1 John 4 and 18 says, there is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Genuine love, trust. Now, 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 can we be real this morning? Whenever you put your heart out to trust, it can be risky business. Trusting is risky business. Why? Because it makes you vulnerable for hurt, disappointment, and failure. People who you trust to do the right thing, people who you trust to love you back, people who you trust to treat you the way you treat them, people who you trust to have your best interest at heart, people who you trust won't harm you, people who you trust won't do you wrong, people who you trust truth of the matter is, is oftentimes in relationships, those people who you trust will be the first people who will hurt you the worst. But, but you got to make up in your mind, you know what? If, if I'm really going to love the way God expects me to love, if I'm going to be who God wants me to be, that even if it makes me vulnerable, even if it puts me out there, because listen, we, we, we've all been there. We've had something happen to us in the past. We've had to deal with something in our lives, and we know how we get. We make up in our minds, I ain't ever going to let nobody put me in this situation again. I ain't never going to trust no another man. I ain't never going to trust nobody on my job. I ain't never going to trust a family member. I'm never going to trust my child. You'll never love because you, it's right there. There is no fear in love. God has put you in another relationship and you can't love the way you ought to because you are in fear that what happened in the past will happen to you again. And then you wonder how come you keep going from relationship to relationship to relationship is because you won't give your whole heart. But genuine love. Is trusting and, and, and see this is the good news when you can't trust man or woman you can always trust God so somebody should have shouted on there when li listen e e even when you make yourself vulnerable the good news is that even if they do you wrong even if they end up just like you feared even if it happens uh, I wish I had somebody here who knows uh, I'm in the hands of God uh, and what I know is God won't ever leave me God won't ever let me go God will always be right there genuine love is unconditional genuine love is trusting but the third thing is genuine love is respectful. Philippians 2 and 3 says, do nothing out of selfish ambition 
or vain conceit, rather in humility. Here it is. Value others above yourselves. If you're truly going to love, you've got to care about the other person even more than you care about yourself. That's what love is. It, it's about allowing you to say, you know what? It's not about me. It's about you. And are you willing to, and, 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 and we, we, I, I talked that first, I talked that first Sunday in, in this series about elevating relationships through communication and, and how important communication is for our relationships. And the truth, we live in a day where respect has gone by the wayside. Whether it's the marital relationship, whether it's parent, children, children, parent, whether it's family relationships, respect is something that we just don't see. Even relationships in the church. Respect is something that has gone. I, 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 I said, it, you know, we, we grew up, that, that was a day when Fellas could be in front of the church uh, drinking beer or playing, you know, marbles or something like that. And if the preacher or the deacon walk by, they stop, they put it behind their back. Hey, Rev, how you doing today? Hey, bro, Deke, how you doing today? And they would let them go because there was something, uh, they respected them enough. But nowadays, I, I, saw, I saw on TV, there was a teacher over in Maryland who, uh, she had an issue with a child and so she called the, the child's parents and, and talked to the parents about the child's behavior. And the next day when the child got to school, Instead of sitting down in her seat and being quiet and not saying another word, she approached the teacher about how come you called my parents and even got physical with her and, and, and it became a fight and the teacher got arrested and eventually charges were dropped and everything. But, but I was just reading that story and I was thinking about she called the parents the night before and the child's first thought is, I'm going to go to that school tomorrow and confront her. <laughs> they called my mother one day at school. <laughs> and she came to the school, and they was in the room talking about, you know, this and that. My mother said, oh, oh, everybody, just be quiet. She said, I'm going to tell y'all in front of him and him in front of y'all. If these people ever call me again and make me leave my job to come up to this school, I'm going to kill you dead. <laughs> that was been about the third grade. They never, because I truly believed in my heart if them people call my mother, that she was going to kill me dead. But the problem is, is we have, and, and listen, we can't blame children because uh, if they see it in the home, if they see a father disrespecting a mother, what do you think they're going to go to school and do? Let that, that's why, listen. So don't get mad when they call you from that school talking about uh, uh, Shay Shay and cut somebody out. <laughs> because she learned that from somewhere. It starts in the we we've got to teach respect to, and we've got to learn how to begin in all of our different relationships uh, begin to respect people more. How can you be in relationship with somebody and you don't even respect them? I read this story about a wife who had a husband who was so disrespectful to her. He would call her out of her name and every day he would leave 
when he left to go to work, he would leave her a list of chores that he wanted her to do. And, and, and when she would get home, he'd go through that list. And, and if she didn't do exactly what he said, he would berate her and talk about her. Uh, that, that, hu that husband uh, died. She didn't kill him. Uh, <laughs> but he died suddenly. <laughs> I want y'all to get no thoughts. Amen. She, he died suddenly. And, and she hated it because the truth is that she was happy that her husband was dead. A couple years later, that woman got remarried to a loving man who loved her and treated her the way she deserved to be treated uh, and deserved to be respected. And one day she was, she was cleaning out the garage and she found a box. Uh, and when she opened up the box, she realized that it was uh, the list that her first husbands would give her on, that she had saved the list. And she said she began to go through the list. And what she realized is the same things that her first husband tried to make her do in disrespect, she was doing for her second husband, and he never asked her. And she realized that, that she didn't have a problem doing it. In fact, she liked doing it. All she wanted to do was be respected. I wish I had somebody here. I've learned a lot of times it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And if we would just learn to be more respectful, if we would learn to be Christ-like, if we would learn. You see, you can't say one thing at the church and then go home and act a whole nother way. That, that's why we have a generation of young people who don't want to come to church because they saw their parents go to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and go home and act a complete nother way. Genuine love is unconditional. Genuine love is trusting. Genuine love is truthful. But finally, the last thing, and I'm done this morning. Genuine love is generous. Genuine love is generous. 2 Corinthians 9, 10 says, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. Question is, is what are you willing to give to show genuine love? What we've got to understand is in your relationships, it's not always about material things. See, 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 Some, sometimes we fathers have a hard time understanding this. That we think that as long as we provide uh, for them all the material things that they need, uh, then it'll be okay. But listen, your children need you to be present in their lives. I wish I had somebody here. They, they need you to give them the time. That, and, and listen, and see, what I learned is uh, yesterday at the seminar on trafficking, uh, they, they, the traffickers uh, are looking uh, for a certain type of children. Uh, they're looking for children uh, who don't get the genuine love that they need at home. I wish I had somebody here. They're looking for somebody. You see, that are children because if you don't give it to them, they're going to try to find it somewhere. Somewhere else. Genuine love says that you're going to be generous with your time. You're going to be generous with your compassion. You're going to be generous with your empathy. You're going to be generous. You're going to give the thing, not what you want to give but what they need. So somebody missed that. 
not what she, we are all right giving what we want to give. But the question is, is the person who you are in relationship with, uh, are they getting the things that they need? You got to learn to be generous. Remember, you, it, what, what do we read already? It says you got to put others above yourself. And see, when it gets hard, when being generous in your relationships gets hard, all you got to do is think about Jesus. To think about what God did for you and me. Because God is the perfect example of what it means to be generous in relationships. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Listen to that. For God loved you. His love was genuine and he loved us so much that he was willing to give. Now you remember Jesus wasn't just any old son. You remember when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan, he came up out of the water and the Lord said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That beloved son, that only son, God was willing to give him for you and for me. He was willing to watch Jesus die on the cross for you and for me. He was willing to watch Jesus suffer for you and for me. He was willing to give of himself for you and for me. That's how much he loved us. And the question is, is what are you willing to give? In your relationship with your spouse, what are you willing to give? In your relationship with your children, what are you willing to give? In your relationships at work, what are you willing to give? In your relationships in your family, what are you willing to give? Your relationships even in the body of Christ. What are you willing to give? Listen, the Bible says we, we reap what we sow. If you're not willing to give, you will never receive. If you're not willing to sow the seed, you will never reap the seed. God gave Jesus. The question is, is can your love be genuine? Can your love be unconditional? Can your love be trusting? Can your love be respectful? Can your love be generous? If you're going to elevate the relationships in your life, you must tell yourself, I'm going to do everything I can to be the man, to be the woman that God is looking for me to be. We pray that you've been blessed by today's message. Please join us again next week for another powerful word from God. For prayer requests or to order a copy of today's program, write to us at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, 2516 Squirrel Hill Road in Herndon, Virginia, 20171. That's Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, 2516 Squirrel Hill Road in Herndon, Virginia, 20171. You can also visit us on the web at www.mountpleasantbaptist.org. Until we meet again, remember, God's world, our mission field.